Hello and welcome to our new video series, dedicated to mastering SQL through problem solving. In today's episode, we're diving into the world of subqueries, a powerful tool in SQL, that can take your database querying skills to the next level. In this series, we will tackle various SQL topics, through practical exercises, and today, our focus is on understanding and effectively utilizing subqueries, to solve complex problems. In this video, we're going to use a comprehensive database called Northwind Traders. This encompasses sales and order data, for a fictitious gourmet food supplier, including information on customers, products, orders, shippers, and employees. As you can see, an entity relationship diagram provides a visual representation of the structure of our database. Each table is represented by a box, showcasing the relationships, between these tables through lines and connectors. Before we continue, we have included in this video description, a download link for the SQL file containing the database we will be using today, and a PDF file that contains our entity relationship diagram. I highly encourage you to grab these attachments now, to follow along with us during the remaining part of the video. During this series, we will be working with MySQL Workbench. First of all, we want to import our database. To do that, we go and add new connection in our MySQL Workbench, through this plus sign. Let's name it Northwind Traders and press OK. Then go and open it. Next, we head to the File tab and choose Open SQL Script. Browse for our downloaded SQL file and then press Open. We then click on this icon or press Ctrl plus Enter. And here is our data imported successfully. After we import our database, we go to the Query tab. We start by typing, use Northwind Traders, and run the query. This short line tells MySQL to activate the Northwind Traders database, as we are going to work with it. Next, here are the 10 questions we will answer with each other step by step. Let's dive in. The first question says, retrieve all customers, who hadn't made any purchases. After we read each question, I encourage you to pause the video, and take your time to think about the algorithm, we can follow to get our solution. By the way, there is no only one solution for all the questions. I will solve them my way, but if you think, you have a better solution, please put it in a comment below. Back to our question, we can solve it, by getting all the distinct customer IDs, from the orders table, which will return all IDs for customers who had placed at least one order. Then, I will use the result as a subquery, to filter for those whose IDs are not included in this subquery result. So, we type select distinct customer ID, to remove any duplicate IDs. From orders. We run this. Here we get the IDs we want. Next, we put this query inside another one. We type select all, using the asterisk sign, from customers table where customer ID is not in this query result. And here we got it, there are only two customers who didn't place any order at all. Let's jump to the next question. Here we need to calculate the total gross revenue, which means total sales excluding any discounts, for orders placed by customers, from these three cities which are Berlin, London, and Madrid. This question seems to be trickier than the previous. If we go to our entity relationship diagram, we can find our solution by first joining the customers and the orders tables, using inner join through the customer ID column. Then, we can get all the order IDs, where the city column is equal to one of the three cities we want. So, let's type select order ID. From orders. And I will give it a suitable alias. Let's say O. After that, we type in or join customers, and give it also an alias, let's say C, and we will join them using the customer ID field. Then, we filter our data using where clause. We type where city, in, and type the three cities we want between brackets. Make sure to type them between quotes, as they are strings. Now if we run our query, we get here, all the order IDs for our desired customers. Then, back to out entity relationship diagram, 
we will calculate our sales, as the multiplication of the unit price and quantity fields in the order details table. So, we will follow the same concept as we did in the previous question, we will use the result order IDs as a subquery, to filter for only those orders sales. As a result, we type select the sum of, unit price and quantity multiplication, and give it an alias as total sales, from order details. Where order ID, in, this resulted order IDs, from our subquery. Now we run our query. We find out that our desired sales are almost $66,000. Excellent. Let's go to the third question. Here we need to get the average shipping cost, which is named as, freight, in our database, for all orders shipped to customers in France in 2014. If you notice, it can be solved by almost the same algorithm as the previous question. We can also join the orders and customers tables. Then we filter only for order IDs, where the country column is equal to France, and the year portion of the order date column is 2014. So, we can just copy these above lines, instead of writing them again. And adjust our filter to match our requirements. We can use the year function to only return the year portion of the order date column. We run our query, and here we have our desired order IDs. Next, we put these results inside a subquery, for another query, where we will return the average of the freight column from the orders table. We use the subquery to filter for the orders for which we want to get the average shipping cost. Now, we get our desired number, the average shipping cost is almost $64 per each order shipped to France in 2014. Let's jump to question 4. Here you are required to get the average order quantity, which is the total number of items, ordered in each customer order. The final output must consist of a table with three columns which are customer ID, customer name, and the average order amount for each customer. The results must be arranged in a descending order by the average order amount. To do that, we need to join the customers, orders, and order details tables together. We can start by joining the customers and orders tables, using the customer ID column. Then joining the order details table, using the order ID with the orders table. We will write a query to return the customer IDs, customer names, order IDs, and the total quantity associated with each order. So, let's type select customer ID, company name, and give it an alias as customer name, then order ID, and lastly the summation of quantity column, as total order amount. Then, we write from customer table, and give it an alias of C. We then join the orders table, with an alias of O, using the customer ID column. After that, we join the order details table with an alias of, let's assume, D, using the order ID column. Then we need to group the output by the first three columns. So, we write group by 1, 2, and 3. The numbers we enter means that we tell MySQL, to group the results by the first three columns in our select statement, which are the customer ID, customer name, and the order ID. Now, we run our query. Here we got each customer ID, customer name, along with their orders and its quantities. Then we will use these results, as a subquery. As per our question requirements, we need to return only the customer ID, name, and their average order amount. So, we type in an outer query, select customer ID, customer name, and we will use the average aggregation function, to get the average of the total order amount column, of the subquery table. Then we write from, and put this subquery inside the from clause, and give it an alias, let's say, T. We will group the result by the first two columns, in our select statement. And lastly, we use order by, and right after it, 3, followed by the keyword disk. This means that we will arrange the output, by the third column in our select statement, which is the average order amount, and disk means, in a descending order. Now we run our query. And here it is, we got what we want. The top customer which is, save a lot markets, has an average order amount of, 160 items per order. What a great number. Here we go to the fifth question. 
we need to find the name of the month, with the second maximum total order amount, during 2014. This can be solved through three steps. First of all, we need to write a query to return each month name, along with its total order amount. So, we need to join the orders and order details tables, using the order ID column. This is because we need to get the month name, from the month portion of the order date column, and we want the total amount, from the summation of the quantity column, in the order details table. So, we first type select. To get the month name from the order date column, we will use a function called month name, and enter between brackets the date from which to extract it, which is the order date column. We give it an alias as month name. Then, we write sum of quantity column, with an alias of total order amount. Next, we write from orders table, with an alias of O. Then, we join the order details table, using the order ID column. As per our question, we need only the total order amount in 2014. So using the WHERE keyword, we filter for only 2014. Then we group the result by the month name, which is the first column in our SELECT statement. So, I write after the group by keyword, 1. Now let's run our query and see what we will get. Here we get all the months, along with their corresponding total order amount. But, how can we only retrieve the month? with the second maximum amount. Here we will use a window function named, row number, this function gives each row, a rank, or a number according to a specific measure. For our case, we want to give each month a number, such that the maximum order amount month, takes number 1, followed by number 2 to the less month, and so on. In order to achieve that, we first put our first query inside another query. And write select all, using the asterisk sign, and add a new column, we write in it, row number and put empty brackets after it. Then we write a keyword called, over. We open a bracket and type, order by total order amount. And add the keyword, disk after that, then close our bracket, and we give it an alias, as month rank. This tells MySQL to give each row in our resulted table from the subquery a rank, according to the total order amount column, starting by the maximum order amount month, as we add the disk keyword. If we didn't add this keyword, MySQL would start ranking from the least total order amount month. Now we write from, and put the subquery inside the from clause, with a suitable alias. Let's run the query. Here you can see, we obtain a unique rank for each month, starting by the maximum total order amount month, which is December in our case. The last step is to put this query inside another one. We write, select month name from this subquery result. Where month rank, is 2. So that, we get the second maximum month with the total order amount. Now we run our query again. And here we get what we aspire to. Our desired month is October. Coming to question 6, here we need to find the IDs and names, for the top 5 customers, by total number of orders they placed. We can achieve this through two main steps. First of all, we need to join the customers and orders tables. And return the customer's name, customer ID, and the count of the distinct orders associated with each customer. Let's write select. Customer ID and company name. And give it an alias as customer name. Then we use the count aggregation function, to count the order IDs for each customer. We give an alias name as total orders. Next, we write from customers with an alias as C, after that we join the orders table, with an alias as O, using the customer ID column. We then group the result by the first two columns in our select statements, so we write group by 1 and 2, and finally, we arrange the results in a descending order by total orders, which is the third column in our select statement. So, we write order by, 3, followed by disk keyword. Now we run our query. Here we get all customers, with their associated number of orders, arranged in descending order. The last step is to put this inside a query. We type in our outer query select, customer ID and customer name. From our subquery result. And we limit the result to only 5 rows, so that we only return the top 5 customers only. We now run our query again. 
and here we got what is required. Now I have decided to leave the remaining four questions, as a challenge for you. I believe in your ability to apply the knowledge we have covered so far, and solve these problems independently. You'll find a PDF file in the video description below. In this PDF, you will discover guide answers for each of the remaining questions. Use it as a tool to check your solutions, and reinforce your understanding. If you have any questions or want to discuss your solutions, feel free to share them in the comments section. I'm here to help and provide guidance as you continue your SQL exploration. If you enjoyed this video, and found it beneficial, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your time and dedication. Best of luck with the remaining questions, and happy coding!